news is that God does care about us. And Almighty God, for the sake of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross, forgives you and I, forgives us all our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel of St. John, the sixth chapter. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for all these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many, so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, 
got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. Now, it was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. I would like to invite the young people to come up. Hi. Good to see you. I'm going to perform a miracle. I have a magic towel. How many have seen these? Well, you have? <laughs> Let's see whether or not it works. By the way, on it is Olaf. The, he is the snowman from Frozen. How many know that movie? There you go. I don't know why they had to make Olaf a Norwegian. A snowman, a Norwegian snowman? Olaf is a Norwegian name, too. Never mind. Okay. This is little, isn't it? That is little. That's very little. Yeah, very little. So I'll open it up. It's still very little, right? <laughs> Let's see what happens. I'll put it in the water. It's taking a long time. Now it's getting bigger. Taking a lot longer than I thought it would. Let's see if it's getting bigger. Oh, it's getting bigger. Whoa. It's getting even bigger. I'll help it along here. Now, isn't that remarkable? <laughs> it's a washcloth with all of the snowman, right? The Norwegian. The whole point is, when we start with a little, it can sometimes be a lot. And what Jesus tried to show us in the feeding of the 5,000, he started with a little. Five barley loaves, you know how big the barley loaves were? 
about that big. They were the food that poor people eat. The rich people would eat wheat. The poor people ate barley loaves, or just little loaves like that. Five, only five loaves. How many fish? Two. Two fish. Started out with a very little and a poor person's lunch, and Jesus fed 5,000 people. 5,000. Wow. He started with a little, and it became a lot. We often think we just have a little, but with that little and God, it can be a lot. Okay? Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for what you give us. We pray that you will multiply it and make it a lot to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm going to have to put my new washcloth in my bathtub. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Theme today is food and feeding, feeding 5,000. When uh, you go to Detroit, two weeks ago I was in Detroit with some of our high schoolers and of course David. And uh, uh, by the way, they, they were good kids. I, I knew that going into this, and I kept telling David that when he uh, expressed some reluctance about going. I said, David, they're good kids. And you can see how David amplified that. They were good. Food. Was, when you're with high schoolers, with, with teenagers, food is on your mind a lot. And it seemed we were always thinking about, or at least I was always thinking about, where is the next place we're going to eat? Uh, so, and, and I tried to pick places that were interesting so that they could have a flavor of Detroit. And we tried to avoid fast food. And we were pretty successful at that, but there were times when it was unavoidable. Here we are at the great... American Coney Dog. I don't know if it's a stand or restaurant or what it is. You may not have known, I did not know, that the Coney Dog was not invented in New York. The Coney Hot Dog was invented in Detroit. And of course, it's best, they were pretty good, They're, it's best with chili and onions on it. And that's the way I had mine. In fact, then David and I each had a bowl of chili. And we were talked into by the manager trying their spinach pie. All were good. Here they are. This is the first restaurant we actually went to in Detroit. The uh, Bucharest. The Bucharest. If you're ever in Detroit, you'll have to go there. They had shawarmas, sandwiches that were chopped spiced chicken with vegetables all wrapped up and uh, with some kind of sauce too. Five bucks a piece, which was one of the cheapest meals we had. And the kids loved it. We actually went back a second time. Here they are eating 
breakfast in our hotel. They had a special breakfast buffet for those who attended the gathering. And uh, it amounted to uh, cold cereal, dried out egg McMuffins, and a few other things. But at 7 in the morning, they, they don't look their, their happiest, do they? This picture is, we were in Greek town. We got ice cream that day. So we're all in line for ice cream. Ice cream was, uh, our lines were sort of the name of the game with 30,000 young people. It's interesting that um, in Greek town, we went to a Greek restaurant and uh, three of our young people ordered pizza and we had pizza left over. And it kept well in my backpack because when we got back at about 11 o'clock that night, it was eaten and no one got sick. Here we are on Saturday morning. Uh, the, the place we wanted to have, or I thought we would have breakfast, was, um, was closed on Saturday morning. The pot bellied pig was the name of the place. But Saturday morning, I guess it's not open. So we asked a, a, a worker on the street, guy with dreadlocks and looked pretty rough. But the thing about the people of Detroit, nicest people. He was just so nice. And we said, hey, is there anywhere we could get breakfast? And he said, yeah, right around the corner. Tim Hortons. So we were at Tim Hortons for breakfast. Now, here's our feeding the 10,000 story. Our first day was our service day. Proclaim justice is what it was called. And you can imagine 10,000 people. They, they broke the gathering up into three groups of 10,000. 10,000 people, they had a bus to their service project and have a box lunch for them. Whoever they hired to make these box lunches couldn't make the lunches fast enough. And we waited hours. They had the first bunch of 5,000 go, and they finally all got out two hours late. And then the buses started coming back for the next 5,000 and they got about 2,000 of them were able to go. The rest of us were without lunch, and that's when we went to the Great American Hot Dog Restaurant. And there we are. I think this is before we were disappointed, but we were waiting. So logistically, they just couldn't get 10,000 people out that day, first day, and with 10,000 lunches. By the way, our service project was to be, we were to clean houses before they boarded them up. You can imagine they, didn't want, they wanted to make sure they didn't have anything rotting or dead in those houses before they boarded them up. So they, sent us, they were to send us in to clean them out, and then they would board them up. That never happened for us. We went to lunch and then uh, we went to Kobo Center to look at exhibits. By the way, there are more pictures on the internet. If you, uh, on the Messiah Youth website, Facebook page, as well as my Facebook page, I put nearly all of my pictures on there. Maybe I'll move them over to the Messiah Youth Facebook page. And the youth we're going to have a planning meeting to plan a worship service where we'll tell you more about what happened. Our text today, Jesus, God feeds us. We were supposed to learn that from creation, that God feeds us. Adam and Eve, Garden of Eden, you may eat of any tree, and there was many except one. There's plenty of food. And anyone who has a garden 
knows. You plant a few seeds, and those tomato plants keep giving and giving and giving, as well as those cucumber plants, right? If you don't believe me, go look on the table in the uh, library. People are giving their produce away. Their gardens are producing too much. When I was a pastor in a small town, the clergy had to keep their car doors locked. Otherwise, they get filled up with vegetables. <laughs> People are trying to get rid of their stuff. God feeds us. We haven't learned it. Jesus says to Philip, see if this isn't the way we would react. Where, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? And Philip's response, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. This is impossible. 5,000 people and you want them to eat? You can see how Philip was thinking this is a log logistical nightmare, much as uh, it was in Detroit for us. Andrew said to Jesus, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves. Remember, this is a poor man's lunch. Small barley loaves, five, and two fish. But what are they among so many? Hmm. Well, that's not one of my slides. Well, there we go. Their feeling was, this is impossible. You can see that they're thinking, Jesus, this really shouldn't be our problem. Jesus says, have them sit down. Sort of like this uh, cartoon. Four people on a boat, there's a hole in one end, and the people on that end are trying to bail out the water. And the other two at the other end are saying, I'm glad that the hole is not in our end of the boat, as though it's not their problem. Or if you look at Maxine, Well, aren't you just the most adorable black hole of need? Of course, Maxine is rather acidic in her approach. Oh, do we really have to help all these people? Remember, Jesus is teaching us that God feeds us, something we are supposed to learn ever since the beginning of creation. Notice the themes that seem to be in Jesus' ministry. Education teaches us. Healthcare. Notice why the crowds were following Jesus, because of the signs he did with the sick. John, whenever he uses that word sign, for the, because of the miracles he did with the sick. And the third thing that Jesus seems to be concerned about is food, food security for all. Jay, when you see me go like this, click. There we go. God feeds us through creation. Luther said, but this is one of the masks of God. Martin Luther used to talk a lot about the hiddenness of God because he understood that sometimes it doesn't always seem evident that God is providing. And creation, we think, oh, I have food. My plants are growing in my garden because I planted a seed and I kept watering them and pulling the weeds. I tended the garden and it produced. Martin Luther says that's one of the masks of God. 
God leaves it up to us to understand how he works through this wonderful creation to provide an abundance for us. One of the presenter, presenters was Emily Scott. Emily Scott is the founding pastor of St. Lydia's. It's called a dinner church. This is an interesting concept. I don't know how well it's going to work. I'm glad somebody tried it or is trying it. Uh, she started St. Lydia's in a poor community and she thought, what do the poor need most? Food. So every day, uh, every Sunday, every weekend, they gather. Everyone brings in food for a potluck. And they gather around tables. They have a worship service. They have communion. And then everyone eats a meal. The dinner church. But Emily Scott emphasized what science, what the scientists have told us, that we have more than enough food. We produce more than enough food in our world every single year to feed everyone with still ample left over. We produce enough food to feed everyone. The problem is, it's a little bit of a logistical nightmare getting that food to places. And if we could just help people in the United States not waste 40 percent of our food. 40 percent of the food produced in the United States is wasted. Either thrown out before we eat it or thrown out before we even buy it. 40 percent. If we could take care of those logistical problems, we could feed the world. There should be no starving. We saw uh, there's a story in Second Kings where Elisha, I have Elijah there, and it should be Elisha, is um, he's the holy man. He's the holy man of God. And a man came from Baal Shalasha, and this man wanted to give to God the first fruits of his harvest. So he brought 20 barley loaves, a poor man's meal, plus some grain that was still in the head. And he brought that as an offering, and he gave it to Elisha because Elisha was a holy man. He was a representative of God. And Elisha happened to have 100 guests at that time. And Elisha said to his servant, pass the food out for those 100. And his servant said, no, we can't do this. This will be an insult to those 100 because there's not enough food to feed them. And Elijah, Elisha said, thus says the Lord, there will be enough. There will be enough to feed our guests and there will be some left over. The servants put the food out before the people. They ate, had their fill. There was leftovers. God provides. In fact, we see in that, God takes a small gift, 20 barley loaves and some grain, and multiplies it to meet a need. And we think, dear Lord, I don't have much to offer. Well, Jesus took not much, not much to offer. Five loaves, five barley loaves, a poor person's lunch. Five barley loaves and two fish and fed 5,000. God takes our little and with God, he multiplies it to meet a need. 
Oh, Lord, I don't have enough. Pastor Ryan Mills, an ELCA pastor, tells the story of serving in a um, soup kitchen, a homeless shelter in Fort Worth, Texas. And he's serving there one night, and th this was a, a sort of a, a shelter that was just run on the, the barest uh, budget they, they had. It was highly dependent upon volunteers coming and making sandwiches every night for the women and children. It was a shelter for women and children. And he described it as a big room with cots along the side of the room and some tables in the middle, and that's where they would stand and make the sandwiches to hand out to everybody as they were sitting around. And he goes, he was volunteering there, and all of a sudden, a young girl, eight or nine years old, comes walking in, and she's got, she has balloons and party hats. And he goes, whoa, what's going on here? Evidently, that young girl had volunteered at that shelter several times before. And it was now her birthday. So she decided she was going to have her birthday party at that shelter with the, the children in the shelter. Behind her came all of her friends and her friend's parents. And she asked them not to bring her a gift, but instead make a covered dish. So on the table, he said, while he's making bologna sandwiches to hand out, very, not very good bologna sandwiches, they came in with a feast. A little girl celebrating her birthday. The meager gifts that she would have received were now gifts of food that were a feast for this people for the homeless in that shelter. And she, he said, there was music, there was laughter, children playing, families together. And he even saw it as a moment of healing, healing in that shelter. Yes, we can say, I don't have very much. But with God, even a little becomes healing, a sign of God's presence, a sign of God's kingdom, a sign of that great marriage feast that we'll all participate in. Amen.
God. You are our provider. Awaken within us hunger for your truth. Awaken this hunger in us and in the church around the world so that our, all are fed with your love and mercy. Lord, in your mercy. We grieve as we, we remember those who died in mass killings this week and pray for those who are wounded. Guide the police as they attempt to protect and to serve. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. In every place of hunger, bring food. In every place of poverty, bring abundance. In every place of terror, bring comfort and security. May all people know the love of, of Christ that surpasses knowledge and be filled with all your fullness. Lord, in your mercy, you are near to those who call upon you. With your generous touch, heal those for whom we pray, especially Karen Gallett, Roy Freeberg, Bill Howard, Dustin Jones, Jim Lampy, Scotty Inman, Samantha Linnell, and Ki Chiona, Alan Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, John Reynolds, Wayne Sproul, Ann Wilbur, and Tyler Ragsdale. Are there any others? You gather up the lives of all your children. Receive into your fullness those who have died. Comfort those who are left behind in grieving, especially the family and friends of Anne Held and of Kendall Mills. Lord, in your mercy, strengthen this congregation in its service to cross lines and community poverty programs. Open our eyes to your abundance when we see only scarcity. Lord, in your mercy. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth is full of your glory. And great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit that by this Holy Communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial 
and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The table is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the gifts of his body and blood, strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have fed us, nourished us with your gift of life, your Son who is the bread of life. We pray that, nourished with your mercy and love, we can share that mercy and love as we leave this place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God which gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen.